What's up? I'm Van, and today I want to show how to use trig to find the missing side of a right triangle. So we're going to go through two questions, and we're starting with this one. And these are the formulas that we're going to need here. And the trick to knowing when to use sine, cosine, and tangent to find a missing side is when you know one side of a triangle and you know one of the acute angles of a right triangle. So that is the time to use this. If you were given two sides of a right triangle, then you could just use Pythagorean theorem. But in this case, we know one side and one acute angle of this right triangle. So what I like to do for questions like this, we know this 34 degree angle. And the side here, x, is the one adjacent or next to the 34 degree angle. So I could just label this. But as you get good at these, you kind of just label this in your head. Now, 25 is the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. So I know this side over here, side AB represents the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And this side BC is opposite of the 34 degree angle. So this is how I would label this. And once again, as you get good at this, you kind of just do this in your head. But now this is what's bouncing around in my head here. I think about what were we given? We were given that we have a 34 degree angle. We want to know what X is and we know the side length 25. And think about what we were told. We were told the hypotenuse and we were also told to find the adjacent side. So with all these terms bouncing around in my head, I think, all right, adjacent hypotenuse, which formula uses adjacent and hypotenuse? It's going to be cosine. So this is the one we're going to use to set up our equation to solve. So I'm doing cosine of angle A, which is 34 degrees. And this is going to be equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to A, which is length x, which is what we're trying to find over the hypotenuse, which is 25 units long. So then all we have to do here is just solve for x. So we could cross multiply. We have x times 1 is x. And this is going to equal 25 cosine of 34 degrees. So when they tell us to solve for x and we're rounding to the nearest tenth, now we just have to punch this in a calculator. But please be careful. Notice this was the angle was given in degrees. So just see the calculator's in degree mode here. Make sure you're not in radians. So you have 25 cosine of 34. So we just press enter and we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So that's going to be 20.7. So we could just say our answer to the first question here is going to be 20.7. And once again, we're rounding to the nearest tenth. This is our final solution to the first one. So for the next question, we still want to solve for x, but this time we have triangle DEF, and the numbers are just a bit different. So what I think about right away here is that I'm given this 20, 20 degree angle. So what I'm thinking about here is we have a 20 degree angle. We know one of the sides is 62 units long. We want to solve for x, and if we're using this 20 degree angle, the side that's 62 units long is opposite of this 20 degree angle here. So this represents the opposite side. X is the side adjacent to the 20 degree angle. And the hypotenuse here is not labeled, but we don't care about the value or the length of the hypotenuse. What we're trying to find here is X. So once again, we were given the opposite side. We want to find the adjacent side. So when I think about all these terms at once, I think, all right, which formula uses the opposite side and the adjacent side? And in this case, we're going to be using tangent. So I would have tangent and the angle involved is 20 degrees. And this is equal to the ratio of the side opposite of the 20 degree angle, which is 62 units long over the side adjacent, which is x. So now I just have to do the algebra. We're doing 1 times 62 equals, and we have x times tangent of 20 degrees. So here we're just going to divide by tangent of 20 degrees. And we'll have our value of x here. So x is going to be equal to 62 over tangent 20. So we have 62 divided by tangent of 20 degrees. And this is going to be 170.3. So x this time around, x is going to equal 170.3. Now, let's say for some reason I wanted to solve this a different way. So looking at the same triangle here, there's an alternate way of doing this that Let's say I instead, so I'm just going to do a little sketch here of the same thing. So we have triangle DEF. We have that this angle down here was 20 degrees. But let's say I solve, that looks like 200. Let's just make that smaller. So 20 degrees. This missing angle up here would have to be 70 degrees because I would have 90 plus 20 is 110, and I need 70 more to make 180 degrees. And this is x, and this is 62. But let's say, once again, I solved for the value of this angle, which is 70 degrees. 
and I use this angle as my starting point and I say okay X is opposite of the 70 degree angle and 62 is adjacent to the 70 degree angle well notice if I use that angle and I do tangent of 70 instead of tangent of 20 now the ratio is going to switch to the side opposite of 70 is X and the side adjacent to the 70 degree angle is 62 so this time around when I solve for X I'm doing X times 1 is X equals 62 times tangent of 70 degrees and notice if I do 62 times tangent of 70 we should get the same exact answer and we do we have matching answers here so either way we're gonna get X equals 170.3 when we round to the nearest tenths place but just know these questions leave some room for creativity and uh, flexible ways of solving okay well this is going to conclude this video on using trig to find the missing side of a right triangle if you found this video to be helpful please like and subscribe it really helps me grow the channel and if you got any requests just leave the topic or topics you want me to cover in the comment section below and thanks for watching